Good morning, everyone. This is Don V with uh, Truth Be Told. And on our last video, we announced that uh, Nancy Pelosi won't be running again. Woohoo! Thank you, God. And at any rate, before uh, we move on to that report, <laughs> uh, please remember to subscribe. Over 90% of the people who uh, watch my videos are not subscribers. Only takes a moment to click that little subscribe and hit the bell. And it really helps me out a lot. Doesn't cost you a cent. And uh, it's completely free. At any rate, without ado, let's move on to it. On 48 Hills, it says Nancy Pelosi just announced her retirement. It says the deal she cut to remain speaker means she plans to step down in 2022, which will set off a wild campaign for one of the most coveted jobs in San Francisco politics. Well, they're all going to be retiring here real soon. <laughs> Representative Nancy Pelosi cut a deal that would put her in a position of House Speaker for four, year, four more years, assuming the Democrats retain, retain control in 2020. But the deal has profound political implications back in San Francisco, too, because Pelosi has, in effect, announced her retirement. Nobody goes from speaker to her lower level position. When her final term as speaker ends, she will almost certainly retire. That means in three years and six months, which is three years, six months too long, one of the most coveted jobs in American politics, congressional representative from San Francisco, one of the safest Democratic seats in the nation, historically a step on the way to considerable power in Washington will be up for grabs. This is only happening only happened twice in the past 54 years. Phil Burton won the seat in 64, fell one vote short of becoming majority leader, and died in 83. His wife, Sala Burton, ran with no real opposition and held the seat until she died in February 87. Nancy Piglosi won in a special election this spring over then uh, Supervisor Harry Britt. It was highly contested battle. Britt actually won on election day, but the more conservative absentee votes put Pelosi in office, and 20 years later, she became Speaker. If Piglosi does the honorable thing and stays in office through the end of her 2022 term, that means in the spring of that year, San Francisco will hold the primary vote for her successor. She might also leave earlier. Ooh, let's her certainly hope so. <laughs> if she hasn't left already, you know, uh, uh, President 45 was speaking about, did you see Nancy Pelosi? She was wearing a mask from here to here. Hmm, what did he mean by that? Okay. Uh, to the office to the end of her 2022 term. That means in the spring of that year, San Francisco will hold a primary vote for a successor. She might also leave earlier, especially if Democrats lose the House in 2020, which seems unlikely. Okay, did I already read that? Sorry, guys. California uses uh, top two primaries. So two Democrats almost certainly will face off the November ballot. Unless so many progressives enter the race, they split the vote and allow a moderate to run against a Republican. The campaigns, if they are serious, will start in 2021, which isn't very far away. So this was just released, and, and why does it sound like uh, it was released at the end of 2020? Uh, the impact will be ex extraordinary, not just for the person who takes over Pelosi's seat with what is typically a lifetime job, a chance to rise through the ranks and seek leadership roles. Pig Losey never had to worry about her challenge at home. So she was able to focus on raising money nationally for other candidates, raising her profile in Washington. A few years ago, when Pig Losey, political fortunes turned and there were rumors she might step down, a lot of observers talked about former Senator Mark Leno as a formidable candidate for that job. Now Leno is 65 and there will be those who argue that he won't be, have time to build up the authority that comes with 20 or more years seniority in the House. On the other hand, John Garamondi won a seat in a Congress in six, at 64, and Diane Frankenstein just got reelected at 85. Yeah, I wonder how. Hmm. 
Uh, Pelosi has made no secret of the ideal that her daughter, Christine, a longtime party activist, would be eligible to follow her. Piglosi, after all, was the hand-picked successor to the Burton operation. That said, much of the next generation of San Francisco politicians will no doubt be interested. That includes Senator John, uh, Scott Weiner, State Assembly Member David Choi, former Sup Soups David Campus and Jane Kim, and probably a long list of others. The person who wins that seat will not only accrue power in Washington, they will have considerable political clout at home and in the local and state Democratic Party. The next race starts today, and the stakes are high. Whew, can't wait to see this. Uh... At any rate, I'll stop right there. A lot of alleged information there. Okay, here's some more alleged information. <laughs> Military convicts Susan Rice of treason. Finally. On the 8th of July, the U.S. Navy Judge Advocates General Corps convicted former National Security Advisor Susan Rice of high treason, sentenced her to death for her participation in the 2017 scheme to defame then-President-elect 45 by falsely and knowingly linking his campaign to baseless allegations of Russian collusion and for misusing her authority to spy on law-abiding American patriots. Vice Admin John G. Hannock, representing the military, opened the proceedings by drawing the three officer panel's attention to a declassified email Rice had sent to James Comey and other intelligence officials. In it, Rice instructed intelligence agencies to withhold the classified data from the incoming administration because she claimed General Michael Flynn had conspired with Russian assets to sabotage Hillary's campaign, uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign. Her request was unprecedented and illegal, and no outgoing administration has ever denied an incoming team access to daily intelligence briefings. Her unfounded accusations were later proven false. Liar, liar. Susan Rice had a history of telling lies for personal gain. Vice Admin Hannock told the tribunal she fabricated information which she knew was false to try to 45's installation as Prez of the U.S., and she disseminated those lies among her colleagues. To prove his point, Vice Admin Hannock played an audio tape of a conference call that took place on November 11, 2016, three days after 45 had resoundingly defeated Hillary Clinton. The participants on the call included Rice, James Coney, and then VP Joe Biden and former Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates. Rice said on the call that on July 23, 2016, she had coerced from the Foreign Intelligence Service Court, FISA, a warrant granting intelligence community permission to wiretap several 45 properties, including 45 Towers, Mar-a-Lago, his campaign headquarters, 45 Park Avenue, and six properties abroad. She said, 45 is not fit to be Prez, and will surely fish out something to keep him out of the Oval Office before his inauguration. Rice said on the tape, I'm sure we'll obtain enough genuine information so we don't have to make things up. These wiretaps were placed four days after 45 was officially nominated as a Republican candidate. She admits it was a fishing ex expedition, not because 45 or his incoming team committed a crime, but because they well did not like 45. This is the ultimate betrayal of the office, and yes, treason, Vice Admin Hannock said. No one close to 45 escaped these illegal wiretaps. They tapped Milena, Eric, Don Jr., their housekeeping staff. The list is exhausting, Vice Admin Hannock went on. Rice, who appeared without benefit of counsel, said, I acted in the name <laughs> of preserving this country. And I'll do it again. 45 should never have become president. And if, if this tribunal, as you call it, is just, I will be exon exonerated. Preserving this country, interesting choice of words, Vice Admin Haddock said, let's remove 45 from the picture. Were you preserving the nation when you asked NSA Directors General Keith Alexander and Admin Michael Rogers to tap the phones and ele electronic devices of American citizens who were not suspected of any crimes, but were merely critical of Barack Obama, Vice Admin Haddock said. 
he handed the panel a uh, ream of documents to review. A ream is 500 pages. Saying each page held the name of innocent persons whom Obama had deemed enemy combatants. Each document before or bore the signature of either Rice or her subordinate, Deputy NSA Director Anthony Blinken. A father and his son who ran a website critical of Obama's immigration policies. Serious stuff there, Vice Admin Hanks said. His voice rich with sarcasm. They were traitors, Rice barked. You're all traitors. If I cared to spend a week in your presence, I would go back to your days with Clinton, your lies and about how Benghazi happened. We could unmask much, much more, but others are waiting to sit in your chair, Vice Admin Hanek said. He reminded the tribunal that cap capital punishment can be imposed for treason and espionage and recommended that face. If the uh, commission found her guilty, and it did, the three-officer panel unanimously agreed Rice be put to death for her crimes against America. The date and method of execution were not immediately set. Uh, it says, correction, we mistakenly wrote the 2016 president-elect took place on the 20th, November 2016, and been corrected to text November 8th. Woo, boy, explosive. Love to see these evil people pay for their crimes. Anyway, moving on. According to the Gateway Pundit, Pundit, it says, Patriot is hate speech, MSNBC warns viewers to be on the lookout for online groups that use the word patriot. The flag is racist, the national anthem is offensive, and the word patriot is a code word used by hate groups. Whatever. Loving America is hate speech. This is a toxic word pushed by the far left. They hate America and don't even hide it anymore. Why hide it? MSNBC tech reporter Dan Patterson warned viewers to be on the lookout for hate speech like Patriot Online. It used to be a very dangerous group of Americans. DIA, the storm has arrived. Okay, Dan Patterson, wait to see the, let's see if the military tribunals pick your uh, tail up. Uh, da -da 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 -da, moving down. Okay, I guess that's about it on that one. Moving on to the next report. Biden Obama's White House communications director believes big tech should be held accountable for misinformation on their platforms. The Biden Obama communications director in the White House believes social media should be held accountable for the content shared on their sites. The statement by the White House communications director is so far out they border on insanity. Director Kate Bedingfield told MSNBC Micah uh, Brzezinski that the White House believes social media companies should be held accountable for what is reported on their sites. White House uh, Comms Director Kate Benefield says the social media companies should be held accountable for the misinformation on their platform. She also knows, notes that uh, there are conservative news outlets who are creating irresponsible content. Uh, you want to hear this puke speak? I'm going to go ahead and put it up here. This was uh, July 20th. Well, we're reviewing that, and certainly they should be held accountable. And I think you've heard the president speak very aggressively about this. He understands this is an important piece of the ecosystem. But it's uh, also the other thing the president has pointed out and spoke to when he was asked about this yesterday is it's, it is also the responsibility of the people creating the content. And again, I would go back to, you know, there are conservative news outlets who are creating irresponsible content that's sharing misinformation about the, vi about the virus that's getting shared on these platforms well we're reviewing that and certainly they should be held accountable and I think you've heard the what a puke what an absolute puke moving on it further goes to say this is truly Orwellian as many comments to this tweet claimed after shutting down the voices of thousands of conservatives on their site including the press the Biden Obama White House now says that social media giants are not doing enough The Democrat Party has gone all in on controlling the media, which is the opposite of free speech. Well, folks, I think we need to do really something about these people. Just keep on your knees. God is moving. He said that uh, according to all the prophets, Kat Kerr and uh, you know, Cunningham and Timothy Dixon, uh, we got some really big changes coming. So, uh, just keep praying. That's all I can say. This is Don V with Truth Be Told. Hope you enjoyed this report. And we are out of here.